Good afternoon everyone. We have a very interesting video over here evaluating this specific integral which will have a good practice here with regards to limits and with regards to this integration. Thank you for joining me for this video. I am Mr. Ish. We have minus infinity to infinity hyperbolic cotangent x dx. We have to integrate that. If you think back to the hyperbolic functions, the graph is not hard and the function looks something like this exactly as you see it. When you're coming here from minus infinity all the way up to in positive infinity, you have this vertical asymptote in between which creates an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero. There are four limits which can be evaluated with regards to this hyperbolic cotangent. One is here at minus infinity, the other one is here at zero coming from the left, the other one is at zero coming from the right, and the other one is at positive infinity. Each of these limits can be evaluated and some exist and some do not exist. If you look at limit as x approaches minus infinity, hyperbolic cotangent x, it exists. You have to break this down into its basic functions, hyperbolic cosine divided by hyperbolic sine. When you do this, you're looking at e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by e to the x minus e to the minus x. The over twos cancel out. When you plug in this minus infinity, you're looking at e to the minus infinity plus e to the positive infinity because the minuses cancel out divided by e to the minus infinity minus e to the positive infinity. These are zeros. One divided by e to the infinity, one divided by e to the infinity are zero. You're looking at here at e to the infinity divided by minus e to the infinity which is minus one and that graph tells you exactly this. As you're approaching here towards the direction of minus infinity your function approaches this horizontal asymptote y equals minus one and that would be true and that's a limit over here which can be evaluated. The other limit which can be evaluated is right here in the area of positive infinity and let's look at that. As x approaches positive infinity, you are doing the exact same procedure, hyperbolic cosine, hyperbolic sine, and you're putting the infinity here in places of x. So let's do this. You'd have e to the infinity plus e to the minus infinity divided by e to the infinity minus e to the minus infinity. Again, these zero out. These are one divided by very large numbers, they zero out. You have e to the infinity divided by e to the infinity, which is a one. Limit as x approaches infinity, your function approaches is horizontal asymptote plus one and that limit exists. The limit exists here at minus infinity and the limit exists here at positive infinity. The limits, however, will not exist here in the area of zero from the left and zero from the right, but we have to look at that. And then we'll get into this specific question over here and I'll show you. Limit as x approaches zero from the left. We're looking at everything here. We're looking here e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by e to the x minus e to the minus x. You can put a, a negative value here very close to zero. If you want, you bring your calculator and come up with a very small value close to zero and it's negative. How about this point zero zero one and I'm going to make it minus. I'll do hyperbolic tangent and then I'll do the reciprocal of it. One or x and what am I getting a minus one thousand as I add more and more values which are closer to zero from the left, I'll get a larger negative value and you'll approach minus infinity. That right there tells you you are approaching the direction of minus infinity and we've seen that here on the graph. What's the situation as you approach zero but from the right? The situation is quite different but it's similar in terms of the computation. In this instance, take a positive value and do the same thing on your calculator. I'll just do 0 0.0001 but the more zeros I add, the better is my approximation. Hyperbolic tan and the reciprocal I'm getting here a hundred thousand. As I add more zeros I'm going to approach in the direction of positive infinity and in this instance it will become positive infinity as you see here in the graph it shoots up. The limit exists here for this function in minus infinity and here in the direction of positive infinity it does not exist right here in the direction of zero from the left and zero from the right because the limit or the function diverges. You have minus infinity, you have positive infinity, the limit does not exist because at zero the left hand and the right hand limits are not the same. And that right there is why for this specific question the improper integral that you see the type 2 improper integral dominates because of that indefinite discontinuity which exists at zero. The limits are evaluated and they can be evaluated at the extremes of these infinite intervals but at the zero the limit does not exist so the type 2 improper integral has to be kept in mind and that will dominate the question limit as t approaches zero from the left. 
we're looking here from minus infinity up to t because I'm breaking the intervals from minus infinity to zero up to left and then from zero from the right up to infinity and I'll separate the intervals out and this is what you'll have hyperbolic cotan x dx plus limit as t approaches now zero but from the right I'll have t over here, but I'll have a positive infinity, and you'll have hyperbolic cotangent x, t, x. The antiderivative of this is easy. It's a natural log sine h, x. You're looking here, everything from minus infinity to t plus. Here, you know, it's the same antiderivative, hyperbolic sine, but in a natural log, you're looking at it from t up to infinity. If you think about the graph of a hyperbolic sine, it looks something like this. The value at zero is equal to zero, but the value at minus infinity in terms of x is a minus infinity in terms of y, and likewise in terms of x, your domain at infinity, you have an output or your range at infinity. When you're putting in these upper limits here, t, t here represents zero, you can evaluate sine h of zero, it's zero. From here, upper limit, you're getting a natural log of a zero. I'm putting in a t in, hyperbolic sine of zero is a zero, but natural log of zero is undefined minus, now I'm putting the lower limit, minus infinity. When you do a hyperbolic sine of minus infinity, you get a minus infinity. Then you're doing natural log of that minus infinity. You can put it in an absolute value and it will be positive infinity, but that's coming from right here. And now you have this plus sign. Now we'll do this upper and the lower limit. Hyperbolic sine of infinity is this infinity. So you're looking at natural log of infinity minus. Hyperbolic sine of t, which is zero from the right, is still zero. Hyperbolic sine of zero is always zero. You're looking here at natural log zero. In each of these cases, you do any of these numbers on your calculator, they're all undefined. Zero, natural log, undefined. Infinity, I'm doing an extremely large number. Natural log it, I'm getting a, a large number, but as I make the value close to infinity, this value will increase and it will actually become infinity. Whether it's minus or positive, these are all undefined. This is undefined, that's undefined, that's undefined, that's undefined. At the end, you have to go with the answer that your integral is divergent. And the reason why it's divergent is because you don't have a finite area representation. And I'll show you why. When you're looking at everything here as the area below the curve, you're looking at all of this, and then all of this coming down here towards minus infinity. You're looking at all of that, then you're looking at all of this over here. Now think here in a very geometric manner. If you come all the way from minus infinity up to right over here, like let's say minus one, you're looking here in all instances at a width which is a one, but you're looking at a length which is infinity. Infinity times that one is giving an area here of infinity. When you look at this part from right here and then all of this out of bounds area, in this instance, you're looking at a width which is a one, but then you're looking at a length, which is an infinity, so you're getting an infinity out of that area. This area is infinity, that area is infinity. Likewise, if you come over here at the value of one, then you extend out here towards infinity, you're seeing a length over here of infinity, but in all instances, you're seeing a height or a width here of a one, and that's still an infinity. Then from right here, zero up to one, you're seeing a width here of a one, but in terms of height, you go out of bounds, you're looking at infinity, and again, the area is infinity. You're having an infinity come from here, infinity from here, infinity from here, infinity from here. So in all instances, these geometric areas which you can roughly calculate in your mind, they're all still infinities, and you have a value here of divergence. And that right there will bring us to the conclusion of this particular video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.